There are a few different ways that you can go about getting rid of bubbles in your ice melt pieces depending on where they are in the piece. But today we are going to focus on getting rid of bubbles that are on the surface of your ice melt decorations that were poured into molds. I'm Sydney Galpern here from seamycakes.com for Creative Cake Design and today I am back with another ice melt tutorial. So when you're making ice melt pieces, you may notice some little bubbles that are sitting on the surface. So this isn't gonna apply to any bubbles that are mixed into the piece or look like they're suspended, but sometimes you do get a light layer of either little or big bubbles that look like they are on the surface of the piece and may even be texturizing it a little bit. There is a trick that you can use to get rid of those bubbles, and there's actually a few different ways that you can do it depending on the shape of the piece that you're molding. Now, you'll notice these bubbles mostly when you're working with silicone molds. So silicone molds, because they breathe, um, and different silicones may actually be more or less flexible, so breathe at different rates from the heat, can actually give off bubbles, and that is what can stick to the outside of your ice melt piece when you unmold it. So it may cause it to look a little bit more dull, not quite as shiny and reflective as you want it to be. Now, if you're using a metal or a hard candy mold, those are going to be greased with cooking spray or oil before you use them, and generally you're not going to have quite the same problem with the uh, surface getting bubbles on it. They're usually a little bit shinier and a little bit more smooth and reflective right off the bat. But you do have limitations when using hard candy molds and metal molds because they're very, very stiff. Um, they're not going to be as flexible to get your molds out of the pieces, and also not as great for a lot of detail or for 3D molds that you want to create. So silicone is going to generally be the most straightforward to use with ice molds and the most easily accessible because there are lots of different silicone molds out there. All right, so let's look at a piece that I molded in a silicone mold. So you can see I'm just going to flex the mold and remove this beautiful plumeria flower from my silicone mold here. This is a pretty firm silicone, this mold, so I can see that it does look very, very beautiful. I love the shape of this piece, but it's not quite as reflective and shiny as the back is. I can see the back is very, very shiny. So what we can do is with a smooth piece like this that has very deep indents but not a lot of little detail, I can actually take my torch and I can lightly torch over the surface. I'm going to turn down the flame really low and just do a tiny bit over the surface and that's going to melt away any of those little surface bubbles. If your bubbles are bigger you may have to do this a few times so do a couple layers of that light heat building up the smoothness on the surface until it becomes completely smooth. But once that's cool you can pick it up and you'll be able to see just how shiny and reflective the torch made the piece because I melted away those bubbles. Now again, that worked on this piece because it's very smooth, it has very defined shapes, but if you're doing something that has harsh lines or rivets on it or just little details, you may not actually be able to torch the surface of the pieces, so I have another trick for that. Now let's look at a different piece. So I poured one of these beautiful ice melt diamonds here and you can really see those bubbles on the surface because it was a more flexible silicone. So if I were to take something like this that has really sharp lines and um, facets on the gem and let's say I were to just melt over this whole thing like I did with the flower, Okay, after a second, you can see it's already lost a lot of its detail. Of course, let this cool before you pick it up, but I can already see that it has lost most of its detail. It really doesn't look like a diamond anymore. So if you have something that's really detailed, um, if the details are tiny, you may want to not torch this at all, but if you have bigger areas, so like crystals and diamonds and gems, what you can actually do is you can use a small metal knife. So I'm using a little palette knife. I'm gonna heat it up with my torch until it's very, very hot. So you can see from the surface of this metal that I've done this quite a few times with this knife. So I'm heating this metal up as hot as I can get it, and then I'm actually going to use this to smooth over the edges, but because it's a flat surface, it's going to maintain the nice straight lines. So I'm going to pick a side to do this on. You'll see a little bit of smoke, a little bit of steam there. But by going over each one of these sides, it's actually maintaining those facets. And I'll have to wipe off this tool and then reheat it a few times, but it is keeping the nice sharp lines. And once I go all the way around with my knife, I'm going to have a beautiful clear gem, but still having those details preserved in the piece. Now let's say you have a different kind of piece and it doesn't have big flat edges like a crystal or a diamond, but it's a little bit too detailed to use the torch over. There is one other thing that you can do, which is just glazing. So when I make any ice melt piece, I always glaze this regardless because it locks out the moisture and humidity. But glaze also does a really good job at making the piece shinier and more reflective. So even if you do have a couple little bubbles left on the surface, if you did not or were not able to torch it, the glaze does help to make things shinier. So if you can't torch 
away the bubbles on the surface, don't worry because odds are when you glaze your finished piece, you're still gonna have a beautiful, shiny, reflective ice melt piece that you can display onto your cakes and cupcakes and other edible creations.